once again, this time spectating Yasuo, the 0 and 10 god himself, with insane mechanics. And I like, we're talking about a 350 LP Yasuo with a 75% win ratio on Yasuo. And in this game, he shows exactly why he's sitting on 75% win ratio. He played the game so aggressive. And I think that you guys are, like, if you want to play Yasuo yourself, you guys are going to love it. So without further interruption, let's go right into the game. Um, so we're talking about Yasuo. We obviously start with with our little tempo versus Zed that starts with the Conquer. I will put the rune page on the screen for you guys right now. And I will also put this dude's build path on the screen. Uh, we're talking about the best Yasuo in the world currently. So feel free to use that in your own games. As a Suo, we obviously love them uh, long and extended uh, trades. We start with the deep lane into the pod versus the Zed that is actually going ahead with a gritty star with a long sword into the potion. All right. We will see how that works for, for a dude. Minus of spawned. We ourselves have the Karthus in the jungles of the map, so we probably won't get too much help. And the enemy team has their Talia, actually a ganking jungler. At the start, we can actually see that the bot laners are, enemy bot laners are actually in lane, so the Talia started in the blue side of the map, top laner is missing, so she's there. Uh, we allow the Zed to, to actually push towards us a little bit, uh, but we do match the push. We have our third Q and we are looking to get to hit it, we manage hitting it, uh, trying to make sure that we're dodging Zed's Q. Nothing too special going in, in the lane. Uh, we are almost level two, we're getting the Q on the Zed, we have the, the third Q, we actually go for it and we hit it, we go for the auto attack, start procking the lethal tempo, we ignite the enemy Zed, he flash and we flash after him, and just like that, this is a first blood on the first wave and a level up. Just for the style. I mean, these are the, like, the, the kind of stuff that you can do with Yasuo. At the end of the day, we are talking about a champion that loves the extended trades. So, when everyone says, like, Yasuo is a scaling champion, yes, of course, you are playing a scaling champion, but that does not mean that you can um, underestimate the lethal tempo. If he gets to, to get all of those auto attacks on you, you're dead. So, if you guys are, are playing Yasuo, if anybody gives you, like, early extended trade, take it, you, you win 99% of the champions. Or... Actually, 80. There are a couple of one versus ones that you probably wouldn't want to go for. Um, most of them are just stuff that won't allow you to go for the one versus one, though. Uh, but you will, you will have to experience it firsthand, unfortunately. We're going back to the midst of the map this time. We're buying the, we're itemizing for the boots, probably for the berserkers, just so we will be able to play it a little bit more aggressive. We see, we see both junglers are on the bottom side of the map. We are level 3 as opposed to the Zed being level 3 as well. We get the level up. We're going for the all and off the level up. Getting the EQ. E. Look, look at the beautiful usage of that E, guys. I can't... Like... Let's watch that again. EQ on the minions. We hit him. We auto. We E back. We windroll his Q. We E the minions. We Q him again. We E back. And he's so scared. He missed his Q. Do you see what I'm talking about when I'm when I'm saying like insane mechanics? These are two players at, at a master tier, they're unstoppable. Literally unstoppable. When you start poking with your Q as a melee champion, I I, I don't even know what to say about that. No comment. <laughs> All right, we are going really deep for a war. Uh, we do see the enemy jungler at the top side of the map once again around our jungler. For some reason, we do not rotate for him, but we choose to go for the bottom side of the map. Uh, we see that the Zeri is low. We completely tunnel vision on that instead of going to help the jungler, and he ends up dying for it. All right. <laughs> completely tunnel visioning on that, on that though. <laughs> We see that the Talia is low, We're, we are getting the follow by the Akali. We're trying to go for the Talia, for the 300. We try to use our E, get caught by the Talia E. Zed is going in for the Olin, uses his, his Ignite. 
we are we do get the enemy Talia and also get the Zed once again lethal tempo please do not underestimate it we are playing versus a Lugo over here we have our W but will that be enough to kill her yes it will guys lethal tempo like the lethal tempo you get your Q, you have Q with no cooldowns. You dish out these auto attacks in, in the middle. And you're just a one versus nine machine. There isn't too much to say about it. He's playing it insanely well. And just like we said, we, we finished the Berserkers first and now we start going forth. What looks like the Mystic? Uh, we are using the EQ. Use our W for Zed's Q. Miss our third Q trying to hit it. We are level 6 as opposed to a Zed being level 5. So we will try to play it as aggressive as we can. Uh, try to deny Zed from taking the cannon. But he will use the Q for it. Uh, are we looking for a die? Alright. We did threat for the dive. But we, we hesitated going for it. For justified reasons of course. Uh, but we did threat that i didn't know whether uh enemy talia being around us was the fact why we didn't go for it we see the enemy zed going being around us we go for the eq on him and he double w back nothing too special going on in here and you can see that we are six minutes into the game and this will kind of ended the game already by playing it that aggressive and understanding when you need to go in and when you need to go out as a sword he knows the champion's limits and he knows which champions he's winning in a, in a one versus one environment and which champion he's losing to. We are going for the auto auto in Q. Getting the slow push. The Drake is up, so we'll go for but we'll probably push this wave and start passing towards the bottom side of the map. We do have the level advantage on the Z. We W both of his Qs, but he still has the W up. We are looking to get the wi the third Q over here. And maybe potentially look for a dive because this dude has no W. Well, not a dive, but we do continue the push going. And before Wave gets to the middle of the lane, Wave is gone. Auto? Ooh. We, we see the enemy jungler coming towards us. We will try to dodge W. We get Zed's R in our face. Flash over the wall, get into the bush. Hope that they will not spot us. Out of the Talia, go for the Q. R in, actually in, getting the Talia. We have the enemy Zed's Ignite and his Flash now. We are trying to chase him, but we have to remember that we kind of need to be extremely cautious because, because one Q and we are down. We continue playing that aggressive because we understand that we have our passive over here. We use our Ignite on the Zed, but he's getting the shield from the Lulu. The Lulu goes for the Polymorph and gets our passive and that'll be shot down after an insane two versus one and Karthus is going in for the ultimate and gets the kill. What a game. I mean, that that's... Dude, champion is broken. What can I say? Champion is broken. Uh, <laughs> not, not really broken, but he's, he's just being... Uh, he's just four and two, you know? Uh, we are going for the Noon Cleaver and the Vampire Scepter after that insane play. And you can see how and why Yasuo is being called the O and 10 God. Not because Yasuo players, well, they do usually feed, but they usually feed because you have to play on the edge as much as you can with this champion. Because if you snowball, you get completely out of control, right? The fact that you have your E allows you to get insane all-ins and that allows you to snowball completely out of control of this champion. So you have to play kinda unbalanced in a way and try to go for him plays. All right, we see the Raptors are up. We have our Vampire Acceptor and our Noon Cleaver. Our Berserker Greaves. We're taking it real quick when another mid laner is missing. We are pinging the, en the enemy. The Karthus jungle to go back. Because our laner is missing. 
We go for the push, Drake is still up, we are not opting for the break for some unknown reason. <clears throat> that one eludes me, man. We completely ignore objectives. Lulu is a second mid laner, Pog. <laughs> At this point, Lulu is seriously a second mid laner. We are level 9 as opposed to the Zed being level 8 though, so we can potentially still try to go for the plays. Especially because Zed is not going for a mystic item yet. He wasted a lot of gold on the Tiamat, which is a wave clear item, so he cannot match our damage. And as you can see, we are trying to go for the plays, uh, the W is bugged. Then it's actually kind of annoying that you cannot see these type of stuff in the... Oh. Guys, it's one small tip, but look at that. How we're playing around the edge of our queue, knowing exactly our limits. Look how he's tr like waiting for the Z to come for auto attack and punish. And this is exactly why this dude is master tier. Because at this level, you have to capitalize on every small mistake. And not only master, but 75% win ratio master. Then he's trying to go for the minions and he's getting two auto attacks and a queue into his face. Goes out with the W, we're trying to look for an all in opportunity, we don't hit the third Q. Our Karthus is doing the Drake, so we are uh, kind of playing around it, only warding for it. We're not really rotating towards it to help him, but just warding to make sure that if anything happens, we might be there. Uh, we don't really know where the enemy Tal- oh, right. we do know where the enemy Talia is. She's around the middle of the map. We can see that the Karthus and the uh, Talia are potentially in a two versus two threat. The Karthus has the Herald, uses it in the midst of the map for more plates. We do know that Talia is around, but we are not too scared because this turret is basically down. And we will look for a dive on the Zed. He used his W, if I'm not mistaken, just now. Lolo is here, so we, uh, so we cannot go for it. Lolo and Talia, actually. But if they were not here, then I feel the dive... You, you would have seen Zed getting dived here. Uh, we do know that the, enemy Lulu, that the enemy Lulu path towards us, so we are kind of trying to look for an uh, fog of war play. Unfortunately, we did not uh, catch her, but this is perfectly fine. We're going for the recall with a lot of gold. I didn't manage to see how much. Uh, <laughs> we finished our immortal shield. We'll go for the BF sword. Uh, we already finished our berserker set at this point of the game. Uh, enemy Zed already has Revenous Hydra. At this point, Zed becomes OP, but game is kind of over. We're 4 and 2. Our Caitlyn is 6 and 0. Oh, and our jungler is just actually ahead. He got objectives. At this point, we're going to the side lanes. We are talking about Yasuo at the end of the, of the day. So if you are. So the way that you want to think about it is like this Are you ahead of Yasuo? Yes, alright, so go ahead and split push because you can one versus one anybody. Uh, are you behind us, Isuo? Yes, alright, so split push. Make sure you get fresh pressure on the map. And as soon as someone is trying to match you, think, can I one versus one them? If the answer is yes, then you continue the, sp the split push and try to one versus one them. If you answer no to the previous question, we're trying to go for the diamonds, the enemy zero, we get the Q and Ado. We had our, our third Q, but we use it on the CS instead of trying to dive her. Even though we are, we are three levels ahead, that looks kind of weird. Karthus get gets the ultimate. Anyways, if you answered no to the previous question, and you think that you cannot one versus one the, the person that matches you, then just group. But most champions cannot match your push. So what you're doing is just, you just outshove them and roam before they can, right? And even if nothing happens by you roaming, you're slowly getting ahead because you will be, you will just have insane amounts of CS. You will, you will farm at 9 CS per minute and you will get all the fit through the, the CS instead of through kills. We are currently standing at 157 CS per minute. Guys, this Yasuo has more CS 
than the boss FFS. He's standing at more than 10 CS per minute. Minute 15, standing at 160. Meanwhile, the boss on 140. I mean, I, do I do I need to add anything to the statement of he farmed he farmed more than the boss FFS? Do I need to add anything to that? No. Oh, that's a big Q. We are we do try to continue going in for the fight using all of our ease, trying to dodge the boss the boss Q. Uh, he is going in for us. Dude, it's just insane. Dude, it's just insane, and this item is just completely broken. <laughs> He's 0-6! <laughs> oh my god, that's... Wow! <laughs> that's all I have to say. Even though it's a, it's a tank sign, I don't know how... Uh, I would say that the lethality is probably way more fun to play. But with the hard still, the damage is actually equal. So that's kind of weird. You might actually deal more damage with uh, with the tank side then. For a single target. Might. I don't know, I'm not playing side. Anyways, we're trying to match the, to match the boss FFS. We're trying to basically play around the dude's Q and our lethal tempo. Because the moment we get our lethal tempo, we shred through the dude's health like it's butter. You see what I'm talking about? The moment you 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 have like I don't know three, four auto attacks on someone, game over. And look at that insane clear EQ. Ah, I was sure that we're going to steal it. In the little grumps. Um, after our shield bow, we are actually going for an insanely aggressive buy. We're going for the infinity edge. We do continue with the um, split push. Note where we ward. We have the ward here, right? And we have another ward here. So we as a suo, we can continue going for uh, the split push in the bottom side of the map and trying to get as many people as possible to fight ass, which means that the team will be able to go for the Drake. We are going for the one versus one versus the Saiyan. He's dodging our third Q. Uh, we get the E on him, the little going goes in for the health, polymorphs us so we don't manage to get our ultimate into the Saiyan. The Saiyan gets a wonderful Q, we manage still getting the enemy um, support. Lux gets her, Saiyan goes in for the ultimate, and two Versus five, we still got one kill. Wasn't worth it in any way because that was two shutdowns. We got another one. Big. I don't think that it's a game you can lose at this point. I'll be completely honest. Um, but uh, about that play, I think that the right play here, the right play here would have been would have been to probably hold the wave around here, right? We hold the wave around here. We see if anybody comes towards us. We cannot cross that. We cannot cross that line because we don't have wards beyond it. And then as soon as two or more people are coming towards us, we are playing with them while the team, while we ping the team. You guys go great, right? I'll do the split push. I'll take the, the I, I will do everything. You just do the drake. We dodge the enemy science. You, and he's dead. And there. <laughs> there, there. There really isn't too much that we need to add to that. Who dodges his Q? Champion has no, like, like nothing else to do. And that's exactly why all of these like skill shorter line champions are weak at the moment. Because like all of the new champions just has insane mobility. Yasuo, Belveth, Yon, uh, like. <clears throat> Akali reward, Katarina's reward. But 
I'm saying that from Ivaro's one trick perspective, so I might be biased. <laughs> Just a bit, you know? We're going in for the enemy jungle camps as soon as we finish the, the bot lane farm. And afterwards, we see that the barn goes up, so we're passing towards it. And farming whatever we can on the way. Enemy team has two people dead. We just start the barn. After the infinity edge, we are passing for what looks to be the phantom dancer. And that's a barn for us. And GG for the opposing team at this point. We will continue spectating the game, however, because we still have 233 CS as opposed to the boss FFS, setting them only 200. That's actually big. That's actually big. Alright, we're perm pushing now, and that'll be especially scary with the uh, barn minions. The boss makes sure that we won't be able to pressure the top of the map with by <laughs> proxying all the way up here. We are going for the recall for... S probably we have a lot of gold, right? We yeah. Uh, we had 1.1k uh, gold on us. We went for the recall. And we wanna uh, kinda escort the minions here. Guys, this is an, a, a wonderful trick if you're playing versus anything that proxy. The way, if you wanna get a wave to a tower, what you do is you escort the minions and you make sure that nothing kills them. Up until they get to the trick. That's a, a uh, an insane strategy to do if you're playing versus Singed. So what you do versus Singed, for example, at the start of the game, you basically walk all the way, like as soon as the minions get here, you walk with them to to the lane, and then he cannot proxy. Uh, all right, anyways, we're, we're playing versus the Zed. We wasted our ignite on the dude. We still have three minions, which will be just enough to get the um, turret over here. We get. A lot of auto attacks. Trade goes down. Inhibit is up. We see the enemy AD carry. Our team is pushing the bottom side of the map. And just like we said, we want to get a lot of people coming towards us. We want the pressure. We don't really want the kill over here. We are playing it slow. We're not even trying to go for the fight. We're using our W's AD aggression and making sure that the enemy team will stay focused on us. We get the inhibitor. Our team gets the bot lane inhibitor. And we already have the mid lane inhibitor. At this point in the game, when we have the three barn minions we are trying to go for aggressive plays and basically die the opposing team we get one more turret the enemy that gets arcade the model we are going insanely deep into the opposing team we get polymorph but that does not stop us we continue playing around our e uh, actually e into talia's uh e if i'm not mistaken focus the boss ffs instead of finishing the game we kill the dude but we get the entire enemy team as well. There's no bot. <laughs> and after we got them all, that was a GG. At 270, 2 CS, as opposed to the boss, standing at 215. And this is, guys, how you play a soul. I hope that you guys have learned something new. I hope that you guys have learned something new in today's VOD. If you did, feel free to join us on our Discord channel where I offer free mid lane coaching for uh, approximately the upcoming three months. Uh, so if you want to get better at League of Legends and more specifically at the mid lane, join our Discord. I will have the schedule to the free coaching there. Hope to see you guys next time. Peace and I'm out.